Nobody's going to right. join your program and be like, okay, I joined your one month or your 12 week or your whatever program. I'm just going to keep repeating that over and over and over again. Like everybody right. joins a program mm -hmm. and says, okay, this is what I'm going to do right now with the intent that uh, they're, they're not going to continue doing it afterwards, or they just haven't thought about it. But most of the time they've actually thought about it and thought that they're not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes very, very important before you actually, like, it becomes very important in how you communicate your program and how you communicate to clients right at the beginning of your program. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. Kettle, you can hear me fine? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me well? I got you. I got you just as normal. But can you hear me good? Yes. All right. So you can hear me good, fine, and well? <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. What about well, good, and fine? Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> you know what? This is the American fine, humor that that well, review was talking good, about fast right, forward. Right. And <laughs> you pissed off the country yet again. Your stupid <laughs> American humor. What was the What was the review? Wait, are we reviewing the reviewers? Are we starting off the episode reviewing the reviewers? What's yeah. the review? I got in trouble last time, so I'm going to be quiet. I don't think I saw this one. So I uh, put it in our Slack channel. So uh, the title was Be Ready to Fast Forward Through a Lot and then Through T-H-R-U. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, through was what? T-H-R-U. Yeah, no, they, 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 they decided they had to do things faster mm -hmm. and so they they actually cut out one third of the word in the review the same as they're telling people to cut out one third of our podcast yeah it tracks it tracks yeah. uh they're was it was it a five-star review or was it like a two-star two, review two-star review Listen, two out like, of five. stars yeah. aside, whatever, like the part that I find really hurtful and insulting is that they call it American humor and I am not an American. So I resent that, mister, whoever you are. I'm assuming you're a man because I feel well, like only a man beautiful. would show up and say that. <laughs> I mean, I don't see why this has got to be a gender thing, but that's cool if you like <laughs> I don't... <laughs> this, is, this is such a prime example of why... As a host, you need to completely oh ignore reviews because <laughs> the reviewer literally said that they didn't like it because it was American humor, even though the podcast was started by a Canadian and is half Canadian. <laughs> like, like the reviewer in the assessment of the podcast clearly knows nothing about the actual <laughs> podcast. And so it's like, you know, how do you make sense of that as somebody who's like actually trying to improve it's just you just laugh at it you just review the reviewers so what was this what was this reviewer's name i didn't i didn't see this it, it didn't it wasn't listed it was um it was using letters that i, I don't recognize so oh here yeah be ready to fast forwards uh, through a lot mm -hmm. so okay fast forwards with an s <laughs> that's weird um <laughs> it's fine it's it's, it's fine. funny okay so this the the headline is great the headline is be ready to fast four words with an s through t-h-o-u a lot exclamation mark so let me let me read this properly grammatically correct <laughs> be ready to fast four words through a lot <laughs> um that <laughs> Yes, there is valuable info, but really wish they'd get straight to the point instead of listening to their American. They used the right there. That's good. So there's only like in a, in a two line in a two line two star review. There's only four major grammatical errors that I read here. Um, I don't know. My takeaway is we need more. And one and one. In I don't know what else to make of this. We need more taco yeah. jokes. We need to say, eh, like, how you doing, eh? More often, Jonathan, so <laughs> it's clear, if, you know, we're based in Canada, not American. Well, uh, I feel like we need to make it very clear that we're Canadian. Let's talk about some Canadian humor, eh? <laughs> Let's have some poutine, eh? So what cool. about all those That's people who are having their ketchup on that poutine, eh? <laughs> ketchup chips. Can we talk about ketchup chips? 
This is a Canadian thing. Ketchup chips are amazing. You need to try them. We can. I love ketchup, the only problem first. is ketchup chips are the fifth best type of chip. <laughs> so we can talk about ketchup chips. It goes sour cream and onion, be, be a five plain, barbecue, no, 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 no. salt and vinegar, ketchup. And then, like, I wouldn't even say that it's sixth. I would say that it's like a distant tenth is dill. I love dill. Jonathan, That's don't do this to me. I will fight you for the dill. You know what? It's fine. Keep the other ones. I'll take the dill. It's okay. I don't, I don't, there's like three chips on there that I don't like at all. <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I don't know. They have, you know what a... chips they have here in Mexico? Lime. Tortilla. They have, they have, they have queso. Literally. This is, this is why I love Mexico. Because everybody's, everything is designed to make you as overweight as possible. I mean, like, unlike the USA, are we that different? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if you think about it, like the most unhealthy things in the United States often come from Mexico. So, like, I also resent that. So, I am feeling very attacked in this episode. I don't know what to do with right, all this. Right. I'm going to need a race just to get through yeah, the most. <laughs> No, you're not, you're not, you're There's not a lot of Americans, but like, Americans here. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm enjoying this. Uh, well, chip let me, over let some me just case speak chip. on that. This, if you want to be happy, happy. If, if there's one thing you could do to make potato chips less healthy than they already are, because they're like the worst, right? I mean, they taste the best, but delicious. Smother them in cheese. <laughs> yes, you should totally do that because that, yeah, no, they're amazing. I don't see the problem. Uh, I don't. None. I don't get the issue here. None. I buy full uh, bags. Also, you know, how, how do uh, just American humor? That's just so ironic that there's only a third of this production uh, on air. You know, is is American? Like, and it, it's just it's just really really weird. Uh, Keto's got the tea. Oh. You steeping? Just steeping yes, tea? I am really steeping good for you, tea. Keto. <laughs> Thanks, okay. thanks for not taking that in the direction every, that I every, knew you were thinking of. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was yeah, I, I swear <laughs> to God, it was on the tip of my tongue. And I'm like, I'm not was, doing that I tonight. I can see it. You know, you it's not that kind of show. We're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. I am not doing that you today. No, you will not compromise me today, sir. No. You very rarely stutter. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you. Okay. We were on a fine edge of me taking it directly, directly to that place. And I just, you know, I felt like based on the review, I felt like I should have some decency today. You know, the, the American humor is already out of control, Jonathan. We, we all know that. Uh, and, and at some point you just got to reel it back in. Um, also, also, in, in addition to these things, we do have a topic today. And you may notice a difference in today's podcast. We haven't spent the first 15 minutes talking about a possible topic today. We actually came to the podcast with a topic in mind. We don't know how it's going to go. We never do. Uh, but at least we got something to talk about, which allows us time to talk about American humor um, and steeping tea and not the other uh, verbiage used to reference what a person does. <laughs> With it's, a bag it's important though tea. when you do steep your tea to not leave the tea bag in the tea for the whole time. It's important to it look there. somebody in the eye and not gaze and not blink and slowly right. dip the, the, right. the tea bag in the tea over and over and over again, just tapping the top of the tea. That's actually how you steep the tea the best. I'm gonna need a Absolutely. shower after I, this episode. I think, I think what I've what I've read on the many boxes of tea that I've seen is that uh, yeah. eye contact makes it better. That's what I. That's what I. It seen. does. Um, it does. So yes. to your to your point, Jonathan, uh, if if nothing's in the way. So I digress. We we're going to talk about renewals today. R renewal magic. Uh, does anybody care to give an official title? We talk every episode about. Yeah, how I don't. I don't like the renewal magic title. Okay. Yeah, I don't I'm like doing sure a magic title. That's the title we use when we talk about this somewhere else. In so the OTA. Like yeah, it. it's, a, it's, in, in, it's in only the online trainer print. academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, I only, know. it's only written in print in the book that you co-wrote uh, that goes out well, to so thousands of people around the world every year. Um, do, this are we going to sit on a race? This actually brings up. 
Well, there is a version four of the Online Trainer Academy textbook actually in production. But this actually brings up a really interesting point that's entirely unrelated to what we're talking about, but is is the importance of understanding how <laughs> how much your language needs to change uh -huh. as society kind of shifts. We used to use a lot more sensationalistic, um, over-promising marketing language. And it worked. Like magic. I mean, we tested it and it worked. Like, like renewal magic. Mm -hmm. We have shifted mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. because one of the things that's come out of, particularly the COVID pandemic, is it's very important in marketing to take a much more thoughtful, compassionate, trustworthy approach. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we have, in the last half year, systematically eliminated as much as possible all of the sensationalistic language that we're using mm -hmm. and gone for much more descriptive, much more compassionate type language and appeals. Instead of saying, yeah. this is your last chance, you'll never get this ever again. We're using phrases like, look, <laughs> together because we really think that it can help you right now. But I understand, like, things are crazy. And if and if now isn't the right time, like, we'll be here for you when you're ready. Right, right. right? And, like, I love you how you actually, don't change. Well, you have to change, right? You can't mm – -hmm, mm -hmm. people are hit over the head so much these days. With, like, how do you stand out? And also, being trusted now is more important than it ever was. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with trying to sell somebody something. Um, but how you sell them, it changes. So in terms of a title, yeah, I don't like the the client renewal magic, even though that's what we use in the textbook. Um, <laughs> I think it's just, it's, it you know, renewing clients, I don't know, we, we'd have to wordsmith it a bit, but something to the tune of like, not losing any renewals that you should get. Yeah. You like know what maximizing. I'm saying? Like not trying first thing to really discuss here, there's, there's a couple things as I was walking home, gorging myself with a massive burrito before I can't even move right now. You deserved it. I, it's, it was you deserved very, it. Geez. But it's super, which means that they add in cheese, guacamole, and sour cream, which is like, mix that with chorizo. It's like, dude, I... Wow. Oh, what's going to happen <laughs> to my stomach? But... Yeah, bless, bless your dad. But I, as I was walking home eating it, I was thinking about this episode... And like, I think the first thing to talk about is what percentage of clients like you can realistically expect to renew and what that means, I think mm, is really important. Mm -hmm. Like you will not, and you should not renew every client. I also think it's really important mm -hmm. to, instead of, you know, what everybody I'm sure came to this episode for aside from a, a hilarious banter is like, like pure tactics, like, okay, tell me <laughs> what to say. Tell me when to say it. Right. And like, yeah, maybe we'll get into to some of that near the end. We, I'm sure that we will because there's definitely some good tactics. Like every single client who joins your program is joining it with the intent that they're going to do one spin around the sun with you. Like, like nobody's going right. to join your program and be like, okay, I joined your one month or your 12 week or your whatever program. I'm just going to keep repeating that over and over and over again. Like everybody right. joins a program mm -hmm. and says, okay, this is what I'm going to do right now with the intent that uh, they're, they're not going to continue doing it afterwards or they just haven't thought about it. But most of the time they've actually thought about it and thought that they're not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes very, very important before you actually – like it becomes very important in how you communicate your program and how you communicate to clients right at the beginning of your program that – that this continues and that there's a future to this, no matter what the stated promise of your program is. Um, and gathering information throughout that client's journey with you, like I said, whether it's a month, whether it's 12 weeks, 16 weeks, however long this is, that you understand where they want to go to next so that when the time comes for you to have the call that you should actually book at the beginning of their program, which is the renewal call, which we'll get into that. You know what to say. You know what they want. You actually have in front of you the progress you've made, and you can map out a plan of how they're going to get to the next step based off of all the things that they've been telling you throughout that you've been taking down notes of. Right, right. If you don't have this stuff built into your plan from the beginning in your communications and as you're going, 
you're going to have a very hard time. There's no like magic words, right? Right. To renew people. So, uh, you know, I that's why I say in terms of perhaps a title here, like something to the tune of how to set yourself up to not lose renewals. Like versus how to get it, how to get every client to renew. It's like, no, nah, that's not how it works. How to make sure about, you don't lose renewals. What about something like you have to die out of it or be murdered like the mob? How does that, <laughs> does that, that resonate at all? That's what I, that's what I tell most of my clients when they come in. Like, Is well, that like that Hotel before? California? Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically you have to be, you have to be killed out of the program like the mob or, or die out of it. You look pretty young and I'm making you healthier. So you're probably not going to die. Uh, so very likely that I'm going to walk up behind you in a back alley if you try to leave. Uh, and it's what was the, you, you have your clients go through a pretty big hazing ritual when they start. What was that again? <laughs> <laughs> hazing ritual. <laughs> What are you talking about? This, this is how this is how rumors get Lynn, started. This is a bit. Yes, and yes, and <laughs> we'll, we'll try this again. Okay, this is how improv works. Improv works by saying yes and to whatever your other partner gives you. Okay, let's try this. Ren, you have you've got a pretty significant hazing ritual that your clients go through when they start the program, right? What was that again? Well, yeah, you know, some of them don't make it through it. But what I do is I take these little Finding Nemo chip clips that I have. I keep some of these. I send them out and I ask them to send me back pictures with them clipping these on uh, personal orifices. And if, the, if they don't do it, they're out. You know, because I need I need tough people. I need my clients to be tough from top to bottom, if you know what I mean. Um, so they can't withstand that. They can't coach with me. You know, like Nemo says. Well, and the best part about that is the Finding Nemo clips that you get. The, the Finding Nemo yeah, clips that I, you get are actually the, the the best kind of body fat calipers that you can get as well. And absolutely. and what most absolutely. people don't know about body fat measurements is that you got to do it. You got you got to measure the body fat in the private parts. Is actually right. the best place to right. measure the body fat. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah, they they tell me they tell me you have problems. You know, I can't I can't get in all my workouts, and I'm like Nemo says bullshit. You know, and I guess I send I do little, I do puppetry. Yeah, puppetry also helps. Clients love it. Clients love it. Well, that's, that's going to be no. That's that that? in in your group. In in your group, you've got a hashtag Nemo, right? So so whenever Absolutely. you're welcoming a new client into your group, you say you know welcome Janet to the group hashtag Nemo, and everybody else is like, oh shit, it's in the mail. Right, right. Nemo's like, right? My like you know Nino's my like when clients yeah. have problems. I'm like, right. oh, it sounds like you want to talk to Nino, huh? Yeah. Huh? I will oh, never. somebody want to talk to you want to talk to oh you want to talk to Nino you don't want me to send Nino to, and they're like no 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 please don't send Nino so uh so it work it works well for me I'm glad you asked that question Jonathan and obviously that's in the version four of the OTA textbook it's in the it's in the bonus section module 99 has some Nino Nemo uh tips uh but I digress uh, I don't yep. want to give away all my secrets Jonathan uh this is free after all. No, we only give away enough secrets here to get people to buy our stuff, right? We only, get, we only give away enough secrets here to get people to sign up for the Online Trainer Academy. We don't give away all the secrets. We give away just enough secret. As, as, as opposed to, the, to that reviewer who gave us two out of five stars that added an S to a word that didn't need it, we actually removed the S. We only give you a secret here. The rest of the S secrets are actually in the Online Trainer oh, Academy, man. which you got to enroll for. That's the whole point of this podcast. Hey, Jonathan Goodman here. This podcast is made possible thanks to people like you. Here's a quick word from our sponsors. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly, and it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the Online Trainer Show, you get a free 60-day trial, so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. 
If you're a fitness nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people, make more money, and have more freedom, then the Online Trainer Academy can help. OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. Oh, yeah. man. So Brilliant. what we were saying is renewals start with the with with the intake process, right? Yeah. Like we, uh, eat, yeah. And, and, so. And, and renewals I'm, start renewals start with how you communicate your program like like are you selling like hey i'm gonna online coach you for a month like what does that mean right, right? renewals start with what we've spoken about over and over and over again which is like what's your vision for your training what's the goal of your client what's the benefits that you what, what's the transformation they're trying to get to right how is that in your program like what's that journey it, it is very hard to renew people over and over and over again and retain clients if you have an act if you don't actually have any word that they're like trying to get to, you know what I'm saying? Because once they've been conditioned to try to get somewhere, even when they get somewhere, then there's a void, and then they're ready for you to fill in the blank where the next you know place is to get to them. Um, which are which is the dolly clips for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> nothing, so really? no, I got nothing for that. Nothing, um, nothing at all. I'm, That's I'm, it. I'm I'm watching the clock and I'm I'm sure. just thinking about Amber telling me to wrap it up in like six six and a half minutes. Uh, <laughs> there's yeah, so no. much so much nonsense it's on the front half. Of it. <laughs> yeah. I hope she's like Dory and she forgets. Uh, what, what was I saying again? Um, great movie, but for those of you that haven't seen Finding Nemo, get go go out and get that. Like you need to watch that today. However, so one thing one thing I run across in the in the OTA as we're coaching clients is sort of that intake process, right? And setting up for the possibility of renewal. Uh, like Jonathan said, it's making them aware of what the process is like. You know, if if you had to, and, and I'd like to, I'd like to defer to Keto here in just a second. And I like to say up front that I'm going to defer to Keto so she pays attention to what we say from that point. Yeah, so that when I up. defer to her, she doesn't say what we were talking about. <laughs> uh, so that's why. Anytime you hear me say that on the podcast, that's just to alert Keto to stop whatever she's distracted by. I appreciate by. that. Uh, and, you know me, and, man. Yeah, Thanks. And, yeah, and pay attention for the next five minutes so she can give an answer. Uh, so in a second, so I'm going to defer the, to Keto. What was, the, what was the comparison? What was the comparison we made in the Slack channel? Carolina is like oh. is like every single football movie ever made <laughs> where she shows up in the third intermission just before the fourth quarter. When the team is way behind, runs out of the tunnel, scores four <laughs> touchdowns, and gets the winning score as the clock goes down to zero. It's basically she, what Carolina does on every, this podcast. <laughs> she like the, she's like the end of every Karate Kid movie. Uh, you know, it's sure it's a, it's an ass whipping for a minute and thirty, you know, an hour and thirty minutes. But that last five minutes, Danielson's going to break through. Like so, somebody's going to get that kick, That's that right. crane kick to the nose. Keto is the last five minutes of the Karate Kid movie. Every episode, I'll here. take it. You save, yeah. you save the day, and, and you should. So, well, the only what reason I was that say, we only have five minutes for Keto always is because we talk about how we're going to defer to Keto for at least. That's all I get. She's, <laughs> she's, she's got to be productive. <laughs> I'm so efficient now. You trained me well, guys. <laughs> we only give her five minutes, so she has to really perform in the five minutes that she's got. Oh, um, wow. But in any in any case. So l let's talk about how to how to set it up properly in the beginning. You know, what what's the suggestion here? Like, what do we what do we say to the client as they're incoming, you know, to to let them know that there is even such a thing as a possibility of renewal? Like, where, where, 
what conversation do we have, Jonathan? Oh, we're talking to me? I thought we were deferring to Carol. Yeah. The, the conversation that we have Carol right at second. the beginning. No, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. I, I, I had muted my mic because I thought we were going to her for this one. That's cool. I'll answer. Uh, it's not like oh, I haven't God. contributed enough on this podcast already. Whatever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, please. Uh, this is labor most, today. The most important thing. I know. Seriously. The most important thing um, when – in, in terms of renewals is actually setting yourself up for success at the beginning of a client's training. So when a client actually is with you uh, signing up for the program, you want to get in at what's called, what we call a checkpoint call. You can, you can call it a whole bunch of different things, but we just call it internally on call. And you want to get that booked in actually when they start the program, like probably just after you take payment, like, Hey, um, when, you know, awesome, can't wait to work with you. Now, one of the things that I make sure to do is I book a checkpoint call uh, uh, about three to four weeks before the end of your program to make sure that we're on the same page, to make sure that everything's going well, to check in with you, to check in on your progress, and to to, to begin to set a plan for moving forward. Let's get that booked in now. And you actually put that in the calendar that day so that you don't, like, scramble a week before the program ends trying to get them signed up. Right, they kind of know what's up. So that's that's the best thing to do at the beginning, and then it's there in the schedule. One hundred percent. And I totally messed this up the first time that I ever did it. Totally forgot to set all the checkpoint calls with my first group. Uh, this, this sort of methodology that came out of the LTA in level two, uh, and I ended up scrambling with every single client that I had at the end, trying to schedule a checkpoint call. I can tell you firsthand, it's far more enjoyable if you do it at the beginning. <laughs> of the process, like Jonathan just indicated, uh, it's way better that way. Um, and it, it, it raises a little bit of suspicion at the end too. Like all of a sudden you need to have a checkpoint call for what, uh, part of what well, you encounter it, with you clients. It, Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, if you do it at the beginning and you, and you kind of communicate it, you know, similar to how I just, I just said it there, right. You communicate it and you literally say like, and to help build a plan for you moving forward. Right. Like like you make sure that they know right off the bat. It's like whatever we're accomplishing here, like there is a like like the calendar still exists, time still exists after these 12 weeks. Right. right. And right. uh and so you just make sure that they know that you're aware of that and that you're thinking of that. And that's uh I mean, they're not stupid. Like they know you're gonna try to have to sign up for more. Uh, it's like, like people aren't dumb. Um, but it, if you communicate it in a way that it serves them, versus hey, you know, yeah, so so a couple weeks before the end of the program, I'm gonna try to figure out a way to get you to give me more money. Um, it probably won't work quite as well. Probably not. You know, and now now it's almost time to defer to Keto, oh who's still awake. Good job. Good job. She's been attentive and listening um, because Jonathan, my assumption is, and my understanding as a coach in the OTA is that a lot of what's going to happen at the renewal call depends on what happens during the actual servicing of the program, right? Of like course. you're giving, of course. Ab- of course, giving above and beyond customer service. I know someone here whose name starts with a C who's really good at working with her clients. So now is the time where we would defer officially to Keto and uh, and, and Keto, what I like to hear from you is, you know, I mean, you can say whatever you want, and you're probably going to. I don't know why I said that. Uh, but what I what I like to hear from you, in addition to all the other things you're going to say that I don't want to hear, is um, is a uh, sort of what what are some of your 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 tactics for making sure that you're giving excellent service uh, to your clients? You're really you're really because you're really entrenched with your clients, like you are your client, right? So could you could you share a little bit with us? We only got five minutes for you today, as <laughs> usual. Uh, Perfect. Ab- ab- so, about how you give great service to your clients? Absolutely. So a quick reminder that the program that I have running right now is more of a group model. So we're all mm-hmm. in a Facebook group together. My clients all know each other. They are going through the exact same workout program and the exact same meal plans. So they're all in it kind of like together. And this is important because I get like, that's the model that works best for me. I am not as good on just one-on-one coaching I'm finding because it's more difficult for me to keep tabs on one person alone 
as opposed to the energy that you put, you know, once and you reach like your whole bunch of people like that to me, it really mm -hmm. feeds me too, because sometimes you get clients who are, you know, they're struggling or they're kind of like checking out on you. They're not responsive. And that is, that can be really tough on my energy. Whereas when you have a group, the same ones that are like super excited, they are contagious to the other ones who are maybe struggling. So it's all like a very beneficial kind of like feed. So in my group, um, what I do from the moment of starting to chat with them about my program, I always mention like, we know that wellness and fitness is a lifelong endeavor, right? Like this is not, so this is, this is a program because it's four weeks. I'm like, these are four weeks to jumpstart you in that direction. It doesn't end here, but this is a way of jumpstarting you in the, in the right path. That's freaking brilliant. <laughs> I love I love it so much. I love that so much. Thank John can love it so much. It's, it's, it's the touchdown in the fourth I mean, quarter. Touchdown. touchdown time, baby. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Red, you and me would have a coin to talk to up for these whenever she scores a touchdown. <laughs> it was a fourth quarter. Anyway. Right. Yeah, so, so it's like, like you basically can't weave some new replacements, is what we're saying. <laughs> Carolina, by the way, those scenes were formed in our stadium here in Charlotte. I just want to throw that out. But, but, Kettle, please continue because uh, Keanu I, I was actually Canadian, by the way. So I just wanted to throw that one out. Don't, don't be True. like that. True. Uh, so, but, but, Kettle, please, continue. I, I love that's brilliant what you said. Um, you know, so, so you're making, you're, you're planting the seed that this is just getting you started. Yes. Um, you know. And I and I really drummed that up. This is where you find the energy to start doing all the things you've been wanting to do. And we're doing it together and you're not alone. And it's like, and I get so excited and people get so excited with me. And it's just like a magical contagion of excitement. So, um, so that's the start. And then once we are in the group, um, I'm already talking and teasing about what's coming after. Because for example, what's happening right now behind the scenes is that I am in fact, creating the next program to follow, which is a six week program. And mm. the reasoning behind that is like, okay, you already did this for four weeks and you killed it. Let's step it up to six new meal plans, new workouts, a little bit of a longer time, because this is how we, I am holding your hand throughout making longer lasting changes. So you killed it for weeks. Now let's kill it for six. And so without really saying that I'm already creating a program for them, I'm kind of like um, teasing them with saying like, oh, my gosh, I'm working on something and I'm super excited and I can't say it yet, but it's going to come. And so this new program, when I'm ready to release it, they get dibs on the information. And because they are my founding members, members, they um, they will get like a preferential rate, which is forever going to be my way of saying thank you to them for, you know, jumping on board with me and trusting and killing it and giving me their success stories, because that's the social proof that I need in order for when I release the six week program open to the public, it is their success that's going to build up the, the confidence for newcomers to to join in. I, I got to say your your 2021 streak continues, Keto. Like that was, <laughs> that was frighteningly good. Like, I, I you know, if, if this is a safe space, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say like, I didn't expect it to be that good when I asked you. You know, I figured, you know, you know, it's what it is. Something in, you know, we get something general, and I, I, I'd end up cleaning it up later to make it sound profound. But you know, that was actually took the pressure off me. Number one, that was actually quite good. I, I had to take some notes. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not too proud to admit that. Um, so, so, so that, that makes sense. So, so now, so we've introduced the idea of something happening at some point after the 10 weeks or 12 weeks or nine weeks or four weeks, like Jonathan said, they're, they're not stupid. They know that the calendar still exists after the weeks are up, right? Yep. Something's going to happen. And I love, I love how Carolina started, like, like notice how she set up her programs to advance from one to the next. Right. Right. She thought about that before she started. Again, I was, I'm with you and dude, that was, um, I did not expect that to be as good as it was. Oh, you guys, I feel like that's the backhanded compliment of a lifetime. <laughs> it's, it's not that I have low but expectations it, for you. It's just that you continually no. exceed my expectations. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Wow. Uh, you know. My expect 
Well, and you don't really want to have a high expectation. I actually find it's much easier to go through life when nobody expects anything of you. It, it's much easier to True. True. just go above and beyond. And so, you know, we've really been excelling at that with this podcast. And the <laughs> the thing... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, you you set up, you set it up beautifully from the start, right? Even down to using like jumpstart, like this is a jumpstart, right? Not communicating that this is it, this is we're gonna change your life. This is a jumpstart. This is how you get your energy back. All of those good words that you used. I think you used the word magical at one point, which maybe I'd second guess. But other than that, <laughs> you you used a lot of really good words. Um. And now you have something else that you're bringing people to. <laughs> Kettle, that's when, how you when, do it. It's brilliant. I mean, that's what's called playing longer. You dearly departed. <laughs> you dearly departed, Kettle. Your 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 headstone will say she used a lot of really good words. <laughs> uh, that will be your epitaph, my friend. <laughs> and and we'll as we cry. Well, I'll probably be gone before you, but as we cry, or whoever's left cries, we'll shake our head up and down stoically. Yes, she did. Yes, she did use a lot of really good words. Uh, <laughs> but there was that one time where she got a review on that podcast she was on that was such high quality, it only had four grammatical errors in two sentences. <laughs> and she took it to heart. Oh, my gosh. And it was very hard for her to sleep at night. Sweet, Sweet Lord in heaven. Uh, that was just, a, that was a dreadful day in the in the sweet life of Carolina Belmont. <laughs> you, you know, Carolina, you know it's going to be a train wreck podcast when I don't have on a hat and the train doesn't come behind me. Like those two things have been noticeably absent through this podcast episode, mm -hmm. and I think it's wrecked the show. We've got four and a half yeah. minutes. Can we, with with your permission, uh, non Americans, uh, can we can we chat a little bit about an actual process, like a step by step, just. What what that renewal call might be like Jonathan indicated at the top of this podcast, you know, we might get into that at the very end. I feel like we're at the very end. We're we're not going up higher than where Carol took us, that's for sure. I don't I don't have anything that good. Uh Jonathan's distracted. Uh so it's not gonna get and Amber's doing like the Amber's renewal probably call, yeah, I think, I think Calvin's Calvin's just getting home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's uh, she's so, been playing Sim City this whole time, actually. <laughs> 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 City, but like not the new one, not like the 3D one, like the old school one, you know, where you could like call a monster right. in or like a natural disaster in for like your city. Yeah, that was cool. That was oh a fun game. Uh, oh my right? god. Sweet Am I right? Lord. It was a sweet game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the actual what? call itself. I mean, I could talk about the actual uh, call itself in about two minutes because there really isn't that much to it if you've set the steps right. beforehand. Right. There aren't magical words. There aren't certain phrases that work better than others. The really important things to remember is, as Carolina did so so beautifully, sorry, so magically, you wanna you right. want to communicate from the beginning of your program that that there's a next step with the language. You want to be communicating throughout that there is, as I spoke about earlier on, like you want to be getting as well. Like anytime they're talking about maybe something in the future or anything that could be their next goal, like kind of take down those notes and keep those notes in that client's file so that you can revisit them with that person. And then you want to book that checkpoint call at the beginning of their training so that it's booked in. And then the actual call itself, I mean, start by reviewing what's been going on. Ask them to remember yeah. one or two times where they felt pretty great, like very specific times. Like, hey, like in your, you know, in your eyes, like what was something you know, what, what was a time? What was a lift? What was a, what was a moment where you felt really good? And they might say a specific lift. They might say when somebody complimented them on how they looked, they might say, they might congratulate themselves because they had all these workouts and they've never been able to keep consistent, like whatever it is. Right. And then you want to apply mm -hmm. back and, and that you noticed about them. That was really, really special. And then you want to say, you know, one thing that I, that I wanted to like basically transition it and say, you know, have you thought about, you know, you've, you've hit this goal. Have you thought about kind of where you want to go next? Kind of put the ball in their court. And you want to repeat a similar sales call process of just getting deep with them and figuring out like emotionally where they want to go. It's, it's, it's not a dissimilar process. 
And if they're not giving you anything, then you kind of have it. You know, you said to me like a while back, I remember you sent me a message where you mentioned this. Is that still like really important to you? Mm -hmm. And you should you should have a pretty good idea of what they're going to say beforehand. You won't always. And be ready with a plan and be ready with a plan that's very specific to them. Uh, and, and exactly how to do it. Get them bought in. Same thing. Take the payment. Get them going. Get a checkpoint call booked. Bob's your uncle. Like, like there isn't that much different than an initial phone call. And it actually isn't that intricate of a process as long as you've done a good job moving forward. And if you haven't done a good job up to that point of like the steps to prepare, you're going to have a heck of a time to no matter what you say. So expanding, uh, hold on, Jonathan. Carolina, do you have something to say? Yes, expanding on what yeah. you're saying about, um, like in the call, having them remember like things that were kind of like high points for them. I take it a step further. And especially in the first weeks of your program, if you have a Facebook group where your clients are, they're excited. And that's where the most positive things they're going to have to say. I'm loving this. This is working. I take a screenshot of every single comment that they post about a good thing that's working for them. And I put it in their file because then when I have those calls with them, if they're not able to remember or adding to whatever it is they say, I'm like, and remember the time that you figured out you were no longer having wine at night and you were totally fine when you thought you would never survive without your, like, wasn't that amazing? How does that feel? And so we go into those good feelings. And so you need that material there because you need to bring it up if they are forgetting it. <laughs> I'm getting the touchdown. <laughs> that was it. And it's one o'clock. That, yeah, was, literally, that was literally <laughs> the countdown. The last that second. Literally, that was <laughs> literally the last second Hail Mary countdown to one o'clock. <laughs> Done. Ren, give me the show notes. We're going home. It's a, it's a, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> so guys are just how well in, uh, <laughs> Kettle just scored the game winning touchdown. It's her 15th consecutive game winning drive You're of the welcome. season. Uh, you know, it, it looks like the Canadians are going to the bowl game. Um, well, Jonathan's going to a different bowl game after that, after that food coma from the burrito, but, <laughs> but both Canadians well, are going not. to a bowl That's game. Yeah. It's 50 50. Oh, actually, you have no idea. I, I, maybe, it could go either maybe, way. Maybe he's got a lead blocker. Um, I digress. <laughs> You've listened to a most excellent version of the online trainer show today. Kettle just keeps shining. Uh, didn't we post the kettle t- Kettleina's time to shine on, on, ne- on the internet today? I think that's the one that came up today on, uh, on Instagram. If you're on the if you're on the Instagram, go and look at the okay. information from the Catalina's Time to Shine episode that was posted on by the PTDC today. Um, she's she she's here shining yet again, uh, like the celestial being, the star of the solar system that she is. Each one of us moons and dead planets in her orbit, pulled by her gravitational force. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Keto. The universe would die without you. Um, show notes can be found at onlinetrainer.com slash podcast or somewhere around there. Just poke around to see what you find. Uh, and in the United States, well, in abroad too, if you're having a bad day today, this is a few uh, weeks removed from the, the, the inauguration that was in, uh, in America. But if you're having a bad day today, let me tell you one thing you can do. Go to Google and just search Bernie Sanders memes and have a day. Yes. Like, you're you're going to have the best day you've ever had scrolling through Bernie Sanders They're with pretty memes. Funny. Pretty, pretty good. The, the, the best of what the They're internet has funny. to offer. That's all, unlike us. <laughs> <laughs> the best, my That's favorite one was day. like, it was like a mock, it was like a mock Bernie Sanders schedule. And it was like 11 o'clock, drop off dry cleaning. 1 p.m., <laughs> Joe's thing. 2.30 p.m., <laughs> Drop off mail. <laughs> <laughs> but he was just passing through. He was on his way to somewhere and happened to notice there are people gathering at the Capitol. <laughs> Taxi driver, can you keep the meter running for a minute? I'm going to go over here and check out what's going on. <laughs> he showed up showed up with his lovely mittens. Lovely mittens. I, I, res, I respect any political official that wears mittens. Can we get some mittens to the mayor? Does the mayor have mittens, Carol? He does not. <gasps> All right, we need to get we some. We must correct. We need to get some. 
starting a GoFundMe for Jedi Mayor Mittens. <laughs> uh, Google that on the internet. Let's get those donations in. This man deserves more of a peacoat type guy. He's more he of a peacoat. Is, but he's more, still, you know what? Yeah, mitts. I'm in for the mitts. I'll get a mitt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give him to veto some executive orders wearing the mittens. That's what I like to see. Uh, let's get some footage of that. In any case, uh, jingle jingle. I don't know what happened here today. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>